Hello, I'm back again, and this will be the third and final video for the Pulsar. Um, you'll see the Pulsar being used in um, other applications or other projects, uh, but I wanted to summarize some of the, the abilities with a section of the web strictly devoted just to the Pulsar, nothing else. So I've got the Pulsar now connected up to a 110 volt light bulb. It's a resistive load. I'm going to turn it on, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but the filament is glowing very slightly red. Yeah, I can see it in the video. And I have it again. Um, I had I just turned down the duty cycle. It's at one one percent. It's at 57 hertz. Um, let me just validate that it's at 57 hertz. And I do that by moving that. Boom, click, click. Yes, it is. 57 hertz. Uh, that's where we left it off last time. So here's another application for the Pulsar. Uh, not so much running light bulbs. This happens to be a refrigerator light bulb. And it does everything that we were doing. If I have to get this back to duty cycle, there we go. Thank you. It does everything we were doing um, before uh, with this little nightlight, although this is capable of 40 watts. And if I turn down the frequency, it'll start to flash just like the nightlight did. Uh, right now it's at 8.33, um, just because I was dialing it so much I wasn't trying to do anything specific. I don't have to flash a light bulb. I don't screw this. I can just leave everything going. I have a far infrared uh, emitter here, a far infrared emitter, uh, 150 watts, 120 volts. It's a resistive load. It's basically a ceramic heater. Um, the element that they're using um, it's got some kind of ceramic over it. The, the element, I have no idea what the composition of it is, but they claim that this is a far infrared um, and it's used to keep uh, little uh, reptile critters. Um, bought this from a um, pet store and it's used to keep uh, reptiles and uh, rodents uh, warm without actually uh, um, doing a bright light. There's no light, you can't see anything. It's not hot yet, it's warming up. And I happen to have uh, my trusty Sentec infrared um, gun here, and I'm aiming, it at the, I'm aiming it at the very top, and it's just starting to warm up, it's just 88 degrees. So I'm going to turn up the duty cycle on this thing, and I'm going to make it cook, uh, and I'm also gonna bring it up to, uh, oh, Let's bring it up to around 50, uh, 55 hertz. And I'm going to go back to duty cycle here and on this, and I'm going to make it 50% duty cycle. And right now it is starting to warm up. Um, I don't want to touch it, but I think I can show you. You can see the gun, it's at 175 and climbing, 186. Right, depending where I stay on the right element, if I actually point to an element, 220. Now, just a few seconds ago, this was at um, a room temperature of 88 degrees. This will creep up to about um, to about uh, 450, maybe a little higher uh, degrees. The thing is, I can pulse this at any frequency I choose to, and I can change the duty cycle to get it uh, at almost any intensity. I have intensity control by changing the duty cycle as well. And if I use the MP3 player, I have another intensity control by using the volume because it changes the bias on the uh, trigger transistor. Uh, so I have multiple ways to use that. It's a health device. Uh, far infrared is purported to be able to do um, a lot of things like uh, um, make your skin uh, um, smoother and uh, promote uh, different kind of uh, um, attributes that you want to have. I'm not going to go into all of them um, because I don't know them all. But uh, I've read a few. I've read a few articles, and that's how I got 
led into buying a uh, infrared emitter. So now I've named two applications. One is the heat blanket, and now we have a far infrared emitter. Now this is far infrared, not infrared. Far infrared is the one that has uh, the health benefits, and you can validate that by doing a little research. All right, what do we have for time here? Okay, we have plenty of time. We only got five minutes so far. I can do it in at least five more minutes. So what I did, um, that is another project entirely, but it is going to be driven um, by the, I'm going to turn this off. I can't unscrew that this minute. I'm, just, I'm going to disconnect it. I built myself a one-stop vortex coil. Oops, yeah, see, I just barely touched. I could feel the heat. And let me see if I can just get a better shot at this without, because I'm running a little bit out of room here. Okay, I don't need to be seen. All right, this is a one-stop vortex coil. Um, I, I've wired it up so I have some flexibility between the coils, and it's uh, rather unique with respect to, um, it's, it's none of their specs. Uh, it's, it is their specs in some respect. I've got the coil windings wound uh, to Daniel Nunez's new configuration. Um, and I won't go into the details, but I'm using 18 gauge wire. And I, I have the equivalent of 36 loops in a bundle, or 36 wires in a bundle. And I broke it out so I can create two phase or three phase system. Um, and that's what, that's what these connectors are here for. So I can run this, and I'm going to use my little night light right here. And I'm going to unplug this and plug my night light in. Get this out of here. Turn it on. And turn on the duty cycle. And get my magnetic... Okay, I got a good battery. All right, right now, you can see um, a digital meter representation, and I'm looking for magnetic flux coming off the coil, and there is none because the coil, I'm not passing any electricity through the coil. So I'm going to do a little rewire here. Um, I think I'll just use some fresh cables. I'm going to unplug this, just leave everything else as it is. Plug that in. I'm going to go directly from the outlet into one leg of my vortex coil. I'm going to come out the other leg. I'm going to use a red wire. There are many, many experiments that I have already done, but I'm not going to make a project presentation on those experiments. I'm going to go into the positive here. I'm going to come out with a black wire, and I'm going to... Okay, so I am now firing up my coil at 55 hertz. I'm going to change that down to something that pulses. And I'm going to switch. Um, right now I'm at 15 hertz, just for an example sake. And I'm going to turn my meter on, and my meter is having a great time. Um, it start, and if I aim it, and you can see what it's doing, it's almost pegging it. So right now I'm sending out a bath of magnetic waves. Um, just by passing um, the current through the coil to like the little resistive load. I can send a lot more current. I could be running a 150 watt bulb, um, so I could really dial up the duty cycle. I can send in current through one leg and then come out and have the 
other leg of the coil, I can actually do another configuration where I actually get the currents to buck or complement one another and they work together as their pat work where the current will be coming in one way through the vortex coil and coming out the same way. And if I do a little switch in the wires, it goes in one way and then it comes back out in an opposing direction. And there's a lot of interesting effects there. Uh, a lot of experimentation has to be done. The point that I'm trying to make though is, is that I can create magnetic baths that run at Shulman's, that run at 432, that run at all those health frequencies. But I also can create frequencies that don't work so well. Um, when I first tried this experiment, I was playing with a vortex coil and I, I, I hit a frequency. And within seconds, um, I'm not mentioning the frequency on the internet, within seconds, I started to feel very strange, started to get nauseous. And when I turned it off, being immediately suspicious that I was doing something that probably wasn't healthy, uh, all the symptoms subsided. Fascinating technology. So here we have 1117. We're almost finished. Um, there's not much more I'm going to say here. This is the pulsar. It has innumerable applications. Everything from driving LEDs and uh, doing it a lot more efficient, efficiently than you could with um, a standard AC to driving health devices of various types and it will be involved heavily in the experimentation that I do with the uh, vortex coil. So with that I hope you enjoyed the video and we will catch you on the next project.